What is up guys? Today I am going to the Canada Honduras Nations League match at BMO Field in Toronto. A massive game with massive Nations League implications. A win or draw and Canada pushes their ticket to their first Nations League final and a chance to play against the US and Mexico potentially both at the CONCACAF Nations League Finals in June in Las Vegas and a chance to win a trophy, potentially the third trophy in this team's history, in the history of the Canadian men's national team. So massive, massive game. I'm going in the section 114, middle of the Voyagers. It should be a fantastic atmosphere in that section. There have been some controversy over the rest of the stadium with the ticket prices and whatnot, but I'll touch on that after the fact, after I see what the attendance and atmosphere actually looks like. But I'm going to the game. I'm going to, in this video, be showing you some of the clips from the match, some of the atmosphere around the stadium, and I'll be meeting up back with you guys after the game on camera to tell you about how it went and do a bit of a recap. So this should be a fantastic day, and I can't wait to show you guys all about it. What a performance, what a game. The Canadian national team is going to Las Vegas for the Nations League finals after that match. Just everything about that was absolutely incredible. That game, after the Curacao game where Canada was kind of taking it easy, I think evidently taking it easy, knowing that they just needed a win against Curaçao in the real important match of this window was this match at home against Honduras. They came out and performed 
two quick goals in the first 11 minutes by Kyle Laren. He continues to be on absolute fire. He does miss a penalty for the hat trick, which is unfortunate. Jonathan David has to take all of our penalties from now on. Like that one, you have to let Laren take it because he's on a hat trick. You have to let the guy who's on a hat trick take the penalty. But Laren misses the penalty for the hat trick, unfortunate. Jonathan David does, however, get a goal early on in the second half. So makes up for the fact that he didn't take the penalty. And then at the end of the game, after Honduras actually got one back to make it 3-1, Jonathan Azorio, the TFC man in Toronto, scores to make it 4-1 and ice the game and the crowd just goes wild. Absolutely picture perfect game for Canada. Everyone just played amazingly for Canada in this match. Just not a single player had a bad game. Every single player Canada sent out there played an amazing game at the top of their level. Alfonso Davies was incredible. Seeing him live for the first time since Edmonton in 2021, wow, Alfonso Davies is more incredible now than he was even then. In, in live, in person, especially sitting at the edge of the, I guess, left side of the field when he's coming towards you, he just looks absolutely incredible. Like, that's a level of player that you rarely get to see in Canada. And when he comes, you have to go and see it. And speaking of people having to go and see it, the crowd, 13,000. 500-ish people was the announced attendance. The entire lower bowl was pretty much full. The supporter section, the Voyager section was crammed full. It felt a lot like the Canada US Nations League game back in 2019 where they only sold the lower bowl and so the lower bowl was filled. So even though BMO Field was half full, it was all exclusively in the lower bowl. And I think, honestly, I'll take half full BMO Field. I'll take 13,500 people at BMO Field on the lower bowl, then 20,000 spread throughout the entire stadium. Atmosphere-wise, that just leads to a way, way better experience and a way, way better game. And honestly, like having gone to the TFC Miami game a couple weeks ago where there was an announced attendance of 20,000 to that game, this game just felt way more energetic atmosphere-wise because everyone is down in the lower bowl. So yes, obviously they could have had tickets cheaper and sold part of the lower bowl out. Even with ideal ticket prices, I don't think this game would have sold out because I feel like most people who were absolutely going to go ended up going regardless of the ticket price. Like, yeah, you would have filled out a bit more of more casual fans. But what you ended up getting was the full bottom full filled with the hardcore fans, which did lead to an incredible atmosphere as much as some people definitely would have liked for the whole thing to be full. Obviously, you want the whole stadium to be full, but the upper levels not being filled out did not really detract from the atmosphere in this game, and I would say that it was a far better atmosphere than most TFC games I've been to recently. So, Canada qualifies for the Nations League Finals, which is happening in June in Vegas. Because of our win this game and because of their standings and their groups, the US and Mexico are confirmed to play in a semi-final which means Canada right now will play the winner of the Costa Rica-Panama game or Panama if that game draws. That game's happening right now. By the time this video is uploaded, we will know the winner of that game. But right now when I'm making this game, it is still up in the air if we're going to be playing Costa Rica or Panama. Preferably Panama. That would be an easier matchup than Costa Rica would be. But the fact that we are not going to be playing the US or Mexico and we're going to get arguably an easier matchup in the semifinal of the Nations League there is a very high probability that Canada will win the semifinals and qualify for a Nations League final. So that is something massive to look out for. Because with the way the Gold Cup is almost always artificially manipulated to force a US versus Mexico final scenario, that means that this right here is probably the easiest chance Canada has to go and win a trophy this year and probably the easiest chance we have to go win a trophy in the next couple of years. This is a very clear-cut opportunity. You beat either Costa Rica or Panama, and then you beat the winner of the U.S. and Mexico three days later, and whoever wins that U.S. or Mexico game is going to be pretty hard beaten down because that U.S.-Mexico game is likely going to be a war. So this is a clear-cut path to winning a trophy, which is something that the Canadian men's team has not done since 2000 in the Gold Cup 23 years ago. So right now, this Nations League 
this game today has springboarded us into an ideal scenario for winning a trophy. So hopefully they can build on that in June, go into the Nations League Finals. That is huge now too, that we get two big games at the Nations League Finals in June before the Gold Cup. This is gonna be a very exciting summer for this team. Vegas is going to be really exciting, and then the Gold Cup as a whole is also going to be great. But all in all, fantastic, fantastic game. I don't think I've ever left a Canadian men's national team game disappointed. Actually, I've never been to a game that they haven't won, I've realized. I've been to the U.S. game in 2019, I've been to two Edmonton games, the Hamilton game against the U.S., and now this. That's five Canadian national team games, and they've won all of them. Every single one of them, the atmosphere and the vibe has just been immaculate. There's just something special about national team soccer, and honestly, it is always, always a great, great time to go. So, that is it for this video. As always, if you'd like to hit like, if you want to see more stuff, hit subscribe, follow me on Twitter, link is down below in the description, and I will see you next time.